Hey all, hope you're keeping well. If you're like me and you've recently cut the cord or in the process of cutting the cord to Adobe Photoshop, you may be looking for a reliable generative AI. Now I'm using Affinity Studio for most of my photo and desktop publishing, but I find the Canva AI integration doesn't work very well. It doesn't seem to understand the word remove yet. Whenever I try and remove something with a generative AI in Affinity, it adds something else. So you say like remove bird, it'll put a bigger bird. <laughs> so um, I've been looking around the last, I don't know, few months and the best software I found is probably Critter which is a open source layered painting program. So it's a bit like Photoshop, but it's aimed at artists more than photographers, although you can still edit photos in it. Um, so it's Critter, and then it's got a Critter AI Diffusion plugin. So on the left here, you would download the app. It's uh, free and open source but you can also download it from the App Store in which they charge £10, probably to pay like the Apple fees. Plus, it, that way will automatically update where if you don't pay, you have to manually update. So you get that software and then you go to critteraidiffusion.com and install this plugin. So it's got a Critter plugin installation guide at the top. It's all quite straightforward. Install Critter, download the plugin. Install the plugin by selecting a zip archive. But I won't go too far into that. You can read that if you decide to try. But you basically install the plugin, restart it, enable the plugin under settings Docker AI, and then you configure the plugin. Now I will show you how to configure it quickly. So let's go to Critter now. So I've opened a photo already. For some reason, when you open a raw file in Critter, it comes out very flat. I think it's a profiling issue, but I've not delved into that too, too much so far. It uses a thing called LibRaw, but I mean, the best workflow would to be to do all your edits and then just export like a TIFF or JPEG and then just do the AI uh, removal at the end. So the plugin exists up in settings, dockers, AI image generation, which will put this box down the bottom right hand corner, which is your generative AI prompt. And if you click settings here, go to connection, You've got a few ways of doing it. You've got a local managed server in which you could set up your own generative AI server, a custom server which will be like Comfy UI as well. So that's another sort of setup yourself. Comfy UI is a conversation for another day, but that's got basically tools to set up your own server or pay them to use their online cloud server, but I find they're a bit expensive for what I've seen so far. It's like $20 a month. And if you're gonna pay that, you might as well just use Photoshop and Lightroom. And finally, which is what I'm trialing at the minute, is you've got this online service called interstice.cloud. And they give 300 free credits to try it out. And then the actual pricing of the credits is quite reasonable as well. It's like 10,000 for 10 euros or something. Let me see if I can find the pricing. Where is it? Cloud. So 5,000 tokens is 10 euros and 15,000 tokens is 28 euros. But you get quite a lot of generations from that. So that would work out cheaper than Photoshop. Right, anyway, let's get back to showing it working. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to use it with the prompts. And what I found is you have to be a bit more specific. So if we just select this lady, 
and type remove lady hit fill you'll probably find it will replace her with another lady when I tested it before the lady looked a bit spooky as well I think it's taken into account it's a graveyard I want to make it to some kind of horror scene but <laughs> let's see Three, two, one. Uh, slightly different lady, but it looks like something from the 1930s. Spooky. Okay, so anyway, as you can see here, it puts the layers as options down below. But if, let's turn that one off and then actually i'll have to go and delete discard it discard image yes and is this being moved up here All right so let's go back to the lady and if we select her but this time a bit more, bit more specific so replace with gravestone and grass Let's hit fill and see what that does. And there we go. Slightly different to the previous one, but I mean that stone, mm, it's better than the person standing there, but you probably want it a bit smaller. But the like, previous time I did it, it put grass down and the little cross in the background. But anyway, with a bit of tinkering, you can do your generative AI in here and it will be very usable. So. Probably not quite as good as Photoshop. That being said, these things are progressing all the time. So by the time you watch this video, it might have improved some more. But it's uh, yeah, definitely a good option. And with the nature of open source, it's free. So, well, at least Critter is. Bar a few credits if you decide to use this permanently. But um, yeah, Linux friendly. If so... That's probably all for today. Let me know if you do try it and how you get on. But I'd say in my limited testing so far, Photoshop Generative AI is still the best. This is probably second best. And then Affinity Studio in its current state as of November 2025 is in third place. So that's all for today and I'll catch you soon.